Well, coming up on today's show, we take a deep dive into what Porsche is doing with their Taycan. Tesla posts a picture of a one million mile drivetrain, and in Sweden, Northvolt are teaming up with BMW for electric car batteries. Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. In fact, wherever you are around the world, welcome to EV News Daily. It's Tuesday, the sixteenth of October, twenty eighteen, and it's Martin Lee here. I've been through every EV story I can find today, so you don't have to. Thank you very much to myev.com for helping make this show. Myev.com is a website in North America for learning and researching about, but also buying and selling. It's a great marketplace, and it's a free marketplace used electric cars. You know, one of those criticisms that the fossil fuel lovers tend to aim in our direction sometimes when they say, "Oh, well, you know, buying an electric car. Oh, think about all the resources when they're new." Well, tell you what, debunk that argument by buying a used one and give. One a second life, or sell yours. That's what I did last week. We bought a, a used EV last week, so it's got a whole new life in our family. And so, make sure that、uh, you check that out if you can. Let's、uh, have a little deep dive into Porsche today. Then Porsche, I'm sorry,、uh, Porsche is entering the electric era with their new Taycan, formerly the Mission E. The Porsche Taycan is a year away from hitting showrooms, but Porsche has further tipped its hand towards its electric vehicle future, and it's looking like it's. Going to be an exciting car, according to CNET. The Taycan production car, which was previewed by a pair of、uh, Mission E concepts, is going to bring more than 600 horsepower, 0 to 60 in 3.5 seconds, and a driving range of 300 miles. But that's constant performance. There's no degradation in that performance, which is Porsche's thing, really. Well, the Taycan is one of the biggest creators of jobs in the history of Porsche. Not my words, the words of Andreas Hafner, member of the executive board responsible for HR and social affairs. They really are investing a lot of money in this. A six billion euro investment in their electrification plan, and 1,200 new employees. I should point out, though, those employees not working solely on the Taycan. But there's a lot of money to spend on their electrification plan, and I should point out as well that electrification plan does include any kind of adding batteries and motors to fossil cars. Well, some of the highlighted quotes taken from Porsche today as they reveal more details about their Taycan,、uh, they said this by applying FlexiLine production, Porsche will become the first vehicle manufacturer to use driverless transport systems in a continuous series production process. In addition to these efficient pro. Is the revenue from the digital products and services should also increasingly contribute to our economic success? We expect by 2025, roughly half of our products will be electrified, not full electric,、uh, either with a fully electric engine or a plug-in hybrid. So they're, they're talking about either way, half Porsche, half of Porsches、uh, by 2025 are going to have a plug. I reckon by the time they get into the battle of performance with Tesla's new Roadster, but also the other supercar makers, the other really fast car makers out there, you, the minute you add batteries and a motor, it just opens up a whole new level of performance. They know that as well. So they're saying half of their cars by 2025 will have a plug. I think it'll be nearly all of them, if you ask me. Meanwhile, Automotive News Europe is reporting about Porsche's U.S. dealers. They're going to be required to shoulder a significant share of the financial and the capital expenditure in terms of the charges. Well, Porsche's bumped up the number of the high-speed charges that it wants across the U.S. to more than 700, or about 40 percent more than previously estimated in North America. And U.S. dealers are going to be on the hook for about 200 of those. It's a pricey ask of the 190 store brand. The charges are not the cheapest charges around. They cost between 300 and 400 thousand dollars per store,、uh, according to this admission by Porsche. Uh, Porsche. Uh, the numbers of charges dealers must install is going to be based on sales. Dealers are expected to install at least two fast charges at their locations. Along with the buffer batteries that are needed, that stores the electricity from the grid and is less expensive than charging vehicles directly from the grid. See, these are 350 kilowatt charges that Porsche is going for. They fill the battery to 80 percent. That's about 250 miles,、uh, about 400 kilometers in 15 to 20 minutes. So. 
if you're applying the miles per hour metric, which I personally is is kind of my favorite. When we talk about charging, I know everyone's got an opinion on this, um, and I see all the pros and cons. But personally, I I would like miles per hour to be something that people use a little bit more often. So if you say that's twenty minutes for two hundred and fifty miles, well then if you say to somebody you get seven hundred and fifty miles an hour in terms of charging they can just wrap their head around that. Uh, So clearly, uh, you would never charge for the whole hour. Uh, Porsche is also in discussions uh, with third-party networks like Electrify America, ChargePoint, and EVgo to augment the network with additional non-dealership chargers. Now, that effort calls for at least 500 chargers on US highways. Todd Blue, he's the CEO of Indigo. It's an auto group, and, and they've got some dealerships. And he says this, and I quote, We should walk slowly and allow healthy demand to dictate our future, not the government, end quote. And I, I see his point, because if you are spending hundreds of thousands of dollars and you are a small Porsche dealership and you don't sell that many, uh, but they're making you put these charges in, that's a huge outlay, and that's not a good day for anybody. You're going to go home from the office that day thinking, where are we going to find that money from, or that investment, or how are we going to make it work? But saying that you don't need regulation for EVs and saying, oh, let the market look after itself, reminds me of, and I'm going to paraphrase here because I've not seen it in ages and ages, but you know who killed the electric car? The the Netflix and now the Amazon, because it's on Amazon Prime now, I think, uh, documentary all about the EV1. There's a quote somewhere in that, and again, I'm, I'm trying to remember as I'm talking to you, because uh, it was a long time ago that I watched this. There's a quote in there somewhere that says, airbags were resisted by the auto industry until it became law. Seatbelts were resisted by the auto industry until they became law. Catalytic converters were resisted by the auto industry. Yeah, you guessed it, until they became law. And so I think, thinking about that phrase, that quote rather, I think sometimes people do need to be told what to do rather than letting the market decide. Sometimes, not all the time, but sometimes. We're moving on to Tesla. An amazing picture released today. Uh, Tesla's official account are doing more and more of this and posting different pictures and communicating more information, which I'm really loving, by the way. Tesla's official Twitter account posted some pictures today of some very shiny drivetrain-looking units. But it turns out that those drivetrain parts, which kind of look new to me, had done a million miles. Uh, Tesla says their Model 3 drive system is designed and validated for over 1 million miles of range, according to Fred at Electric. Today, Tesla released some impressive pictures of these Model 3 drive units following a million miles of testing. Elon Musk says that these drive units had done a million miles. The electric truck that Tesla is making, the semi-truck, is going to be using the Model 3 drive units and putting them to the test. So those long distances, those long distance drives that are going to be done in the Tesla Semi, pulling a very heavy loads, and also just the sheer number of fleet miles being done. A million mile commercial vehicle is not strange territory. It's You can't imagine having a personal car or even a taxi, really, a cab doing a million miles. But these commercial vehicles, by the time I get onto the second and third owners, all those kind of things, that's yeah, it happens. So... Can you imagine EVs when people get their head around the fact that a million miles, eh, it's not a big deal. I mean, there's other things that are going to wear out and those consumables that you'll need to replace. And I'm sure that after sitting in a million mile seat, uh, the driver's going to wear a few uh, bald patches in it. But as for the drivetrain, after a million miles of testing, Tesla say, eh, doing okay so far. Here's to the next million. Well, six Tesla owner club leaders from nine countries convened over the weekend in Fremont, California to meet and strategize and plan for how Tesla clubs continue to support uh, Tesla's owners around the world in an article by Sean Mitchell for Inside EVs. And if anyone knows what they're talking about with Tesla owner clubs, it would be Sean. Well, Tesla club owners are officially recognized by Tesla and have ongoing communication with official representatives from the, uh, with the intent, says Sean, of enhancing the owner experience. Collectively, there are 60 officially recognized clubs in 17 countries and more than 28,000 members. And that is just testaments to the passion and love for the brand that people have, that actually there is even a weekend convention where the owners' clubs get together to talk about how can we help promote 
the company and support the company. There aren't many products in the world. I can't think of any of them at the moment. I'm sure there must be some with big fan bases. Uh, it may be in different markets around the world. But if you can think of a company that's equivalent to Tesla, where people want to see it succeed, let me know. Email. Hello at evnewsdaily.com is my email address. Well, Sweden's Northvolt is teaming up with BMW. Uh, Northvolt is building Europe's largest battery factory in Sweden, and it's joined forces with BMW and Belgium's Umicore to develop the process for electric car batteries to be recycled. According to a Reuters article today, BMW had a funding investment of undisclosed size in the venture. The Swedish startup, which plans to build a factory in Sweden to produce 32 gigawatt hours of battery capacity by 2023, in a statement yesterday. I'll put that Reuters article online. OK, two more articles to go today. You're going to like this next one, and I think you're going to have a bit of a laugh with this one. The Saudi energy minister, Khalid al falir today questioned what he describes as the hype of electric vehicles and compared it to past misconceptions around the theory of peak oil, according to Arab News website today. Miscalculations around the pace of electrification, he says, could create serious risks to global energy security. Oh, this sounds like some fear, uncertainty and doubt. Uh, conventional vehicles today, he says, despite all the hype, represent 99.8% of the global vehicle fleet. That means electric vehicles have 0.2%, well, he's good at maths, uh, of the fleet, only substituting about 30,000 barrels per day of oil, equivalent of the total global demand of 100 million barrels. Yes, I've mentioned this on the podcast before. Total global oil demand of a hundred million barrels per day is slightly off the charts and way above what people back in the kind of peak oil thing going on in the 1990s said it would never get above, was it 90 odd? Uh, well, 30,000 barrels a day doesn't really chip too much into a hundred million barrels of oil a day, but it's 30,000 barrels of oil every single day. And if if EVs are doing that, that's a win. Well, even if those numbers, he says, increase by a factor of 100 over the next couple of decades, okay, so let's put a number on that, 20 years, they would still remain negligible in the global energy mix, he said. History tells us that Orderly energy transformations are a complex phenomenon involving generational time frames as opposed to quick swatches that could lead to costly setbacks. And who better to say that than somebody from the oil industry from Saudi Arabia? Well, uh, it's always good to hear opposing views. I'm sure that you and I have a different take on that, but that's what the Saudi energy minister says, that EVs are hype and that they're really not making a dent too much. All right. Well, let's see where we go. Give us a couple of years, maybe five or ten. We'll check in with him again and see how happy he is. And finally, September deliveries of BMW i, BMW i Performance and Mini electric vehicles totaled in September 14,559 units uh, worldwide. An increase of 35% same month last year. The highest monthly total ever for BMW Group. So congratulations to everybody at BMW and anybody at BMW who listens to this podcast uh, if you work on their electrification programs. Sales year to date, 97,543 once again. That is up 42%. Since the launch of the BMW i3 five years ago now, a total of more than 313 BMW Group electrified vehicles have been delivered in the hands of the customers. Recently, we heard about the BMW i3 getting its battery upgrade to 120 amp hours, and of course, the BMW i3 S as well. One of my neighbours has one of those. It looks so nice. We drive past it, and it's like, mm, that is a really, really lovely car. If we had £35,000 in the bank and the mortgage was paid, then I'd be tempted to, but sadly, not quite yet. Uh, need to be more sensible. Uh, the uh, the i3 variants have uh, just had a little range boost of about 30%, and because of that, here in Europe at least, they say that the range is now enough not to have a range extender. However, the range extender is being used in other markets around the world, so 
Which one is it then, BMW? Or is it anything to do with the new emissions rules coming in here in Europe? Well, the BMW Group offer nine electrified vehicles in their portfolio, like the BMW 5 Series, the Mini Cooper, new Mini Electric coming soon as well, the i3, the i8, the BMW 225XE, the 330E, the X540E. Now, one of my neighbours, by the way, and a, a, you know, a different neighbour who I get uh, the train, I commute every day to London and I get the train with him. He recently tried to buy a, a BMW 330E i performance, and uh, and he has a um, has a very good job, by the way. So I uh, I think his money's good, by the way. I think he's, I think he's good for it, <laughs> uh, slightly more than I am. And uh, he couldn't buy one for love nor money. He ended up buying something else. But uh, I forget what he bought. I should ask him again because he, he did he did tell me. Lovely, but he wanted the 330E. No. Uh, you can't have one of those. Sorry, sir. Thank you very much to myev.com for setting this week's question of the week. Keep your comments coming in on email, which is hello at evnewsdaily.com, or you can use Facebook, YouTube, and the blog website has a feedback form. Here's the question. What's more important for you, the size of battery or the efficiency of an EV? Well, Tesla recently topped the efficiency charts, and Hyundai Ioniq drivers will talk to you all day about how efficient their car is. But then again, the race for the bigger batteries are on. What would you rather on a new EV at the moment? Would it be a nice big battery, or would it be a more efficient battery? Maybe it's smaller, maybe you stop more often. Let me know your thoughts on the question of the week. Thank you very much to 102 patrons of the podcast. If you want to check out patreon.com slash evnewsdaily. Not compulsory by any means at all. And thank you very much if you listen to this show over the last few weeks and months and a few people emailing me recently just to let me know that they are new listeners to the podcast and have been enjoying it. Always feel free just to drop me an email to say, oh, hello, I'm here. Uh, it's just really nice to have a chat to you. The email address is hello at evnewsdaily. There are 266 previous episodes online for free from the places you get podcasts, and the blog is evnewsdaily.com. That's the same thing to search for if you want to find my socials. Have a wonderful day, and I'll catch you tomorrow.